Okay, so we're pretty much ready to go here. You'll see the motor is in now. I will do some underwater pictures a little bit later. But um, again, if you look at where the, the tiller handle is, you don't have to have a tiller handle that far out. Some people actually cut this down and put it way down in there, which you know what I kind of like too. But, uh, you know, for all intents and purposes, I'm keeping it everything just factory without doing any mods on it. Um, I did adjust the stabilizers. You'll see they're not touching the water yet. Well, this one is. But they're running about halfway up. So when I sit in it, it's going to barely touch. It creates a lot less drag. And remember, I'm about 205 pounds, so we'll get some real numbers, and uh, we'll go from there. Now, you'll see in here, this rocks. Don't panic. It's got stoppers on it, so it's not going to hurt anything if it rides up. It's not going to flip around. All right, note to oneself, you definitely need to use the rudder, man. The back end gets squirrely on this without the rudder. So rudder's down. I'm going to use that to fully control this. I don't know what kind of video I'm going to get, but I'll do the best I can. Try to put it in my pocket here because I cannot hold this. There's like no way. Let's see what we got. All right, so I'm going to walk you guys through this. Hopefully you guys get a good idea of what you're seeing here. We're right at a little over four. Dude, it's not even loud. I hope it doesn't come out loud on the GoPro. Very tolerable, four all day long. About 60% throttle. Smooth as a baby's butt. Once it opens up, I'm gonna punch it. Again, I have stabilizers fully up. 90% up, like I said before, barely skimming. All right, I'm gonna start throttling up here. We're at five. Going through weed and hitting current. So smooth. It's no different than a traditional outboard, guys. So don't compare this to a two-stroke. Not even in the same family. my two cents here because this motor is a 35 cc the last 25 percent of your throttle is wasted you just can't have, you can't maintain torque so i got about i'm gonna put another uh, speedo on in a minute but i definitely got 5.9 ish 6.0 um on a revo and that's again with a 35 cc now granted, if you got a bigger motor, you're gonna be in the sixes easily all day long. So I'm gonna switch speedo counters here, make a quick adjustment, 
go get some drag on the pontoons and let's see what we got. I smelled a little exhaust, I'll be honest with you, but once it warmed up, you get a whiff here and there, but I mean, it's not like, you know, my mouth is on a uh, tailpipe. Alright, so what I'm going to do, let's just get some, I don't know, let's just go fast, who cares? Joker around. Alright, let's go the other way. Alright, so what I'm going to do now, different uh, GPS system. It'd be cool on a tandem to put this in. Control it way up from the front, out of the way. I'm literally going sideways. That was kind of weird. Can't do that with my new canoe. Well, it takes no throttle to do this thing at all.
Hey guys, all right, so let me address something here. I know a lot of people tend to purchase these and they're not sure how to set them up. These are a bit different than the standard long legs. The um, throttle systems and the kill switches, I usually make them a bit shorter. Um, so you'll notice in here, this one's a little bit shorter and it wraps up in here because this is a lot closer to the power head than a common long leg. Common long leg has probably a good four inches more, if not six, which would straighten this out a little bit as it kind of curves back. Now, the problem here is with these being so small and compact that you have a couple choices. What I do is I actually take off the, uh, the wire separators and I run this underneath and I let it just simply find its path right to, right to where it connects into the carburetor. If you guys can see, let me pop this off for you. Okay. Again, depending on what motor you run, Hondas are a little more adjustable. The clones are not as adjustable. Um, everything else already is pretty much where it needs to be. Um, but like I said, you do always, these always are excellent to have. So you can pull the power heads, remove things, or adjust things. And the reason why this is so long is because of storage. Normally, if I know this arm's never gonna come down, I'll cut this back a little bit so it just kind of loops right up into the carb. The problem is a lot of people want to store these. They want to put them in the front. And in order for you guys to do that, let me just do it for you guys real quick. You're going to have no choice but to make it longer. To get that hump around without anything happening to the cable, you need to have the ability to move this back. So I could make it a little bit shorter, but you're going to wind up having a stretch in it somewhere. And that's not good. So that's what I'm saying. So commonly, a lot of people drive them up here. Let me just show you guys real quick. A lot of people will drive them on really diff difficult angles on the tiller, uh, the tiller arms. So what I usually do is I'll cut them down here. Some people nub them out, shorten this, they resolder themselves. It's up to you. Again, everyone's got a little bit different build, a little different philosophy on how you want to do it. I know today I had to run this on a high angle. Not a big fan of it, but I'm also not a small guy. So this was pretty close to me in the Revo. So if I was going to customize this, I would definitely shorten this length if I knew this was never going to move and it was going to be something that was in and out and not stored. But if it's stored, you got to keep it standard length. Otherwise, you're going to run into an issue where this is not going to be long enough and you're going to have to take the spring out and it's a pain in the butt. Not really, but you get my drift on it.